Hey, what's up gang? Cat Daddy here with you today. And you know, welcome to the new normal. And uh, you know, we're at home. We're with our animals and the rest of our family. And that's what today is about. Uh, today's uh, impromptu Cat Mojo is all about life in the new COVID-19 normal. Hey, just for now, but let's treat this as something that is potentially a real positive for us, for real. What I mean is that we can get to know our animal companions a lot better because we don't usually spend this kind of time at home with them. Plus, we find out what they're like when they're around us and maybe the kids and maybe whoever else all the time, all day long. In today's mojo, we're going to First, talk about how your cat perceives the change in territory and the change in their routine and how they may react to it. We're gonna talk about proactively diffusing the problems that you may or may not notice, but I'll help you notice them too. And finally, we're gonna talk about the next part, which is enriching their lives and enriching the bond between you and them. So let's get going. I think it's really important that we get a quick primer on how your cat sees their territory. What about uh, territory is so crucial to them? Well, let's face it, territory is everything to a cat. Confidence in ownership of territory equals cat mojo. So now what happens when everyone is home? Let's say all of you guys uh, work away from home. Well, right now you're not. There are all of these beings that are now crowding that territory. And they're used to you going off to work, they're, they're like, oh, see you later, have fun. And then the rest of the day, it's on their terms, watching the birds out the window, knocking stuff off the shelves, sleeping X amount of the day. Well, now that's all off the table. So their whole uh, the system of dealing with space and time is just absolutely whack. That's the first thing that we're dealing with here, is, it, is an inherent imbalance in the way uh, your cats navigate space and the way they deal with time. So how are we gonna deal with that? So the overall solution to all this is what I call the three R's. And the three R's are routine, ritual, rhythm. It's all a matter of the investment level. What we do, what our cats do, when we eat, how we do things, that's routine. When we start clamping down and saying, you know what, we're going to commit to things happening in much the same way every day, which plays into a cat's sense of security and ownership of territory and mojo, that's ritual. And then once that plays out, day after day after day, that's rhythm, baby, that's rhythm. And rhythm is essential in a cat's life, in your life. Things have changed around so much, embracing these three R's, really getting into these levels of commitment is just really important to a well-balanced home and the confidence of your cat. So how do we start with the three R's? Well, my big thing is feeding. For those of you guys who free feed your cats, this is a great opportunity to stop. This, let's just let that sink in for a second. Stop free feeding your cats. First of all, it's not the way a cat works to have food just readily available to them all day, every day. They are, in nature, out there to hunt, to be opportunistic, and to eat when they can. I'm a fan of at least three uh, feedings a day. Uh, when you get up, let's say when you get home from work, well, that ain't gonna happen, but you know what I mean. And, and then again, about an hour, maybe two before you go to bed. That way we are balancing their energetic levels and we're trying to match them up with ours. You feed a meal. After about 45 minutes or so, you've given everyone a chance to eat. You pick up that food. But for those of you who are working your way through it, you can leave a little bit of that kibble down in between meals, but just enough Enough, just enough to keep them hungry for the next meal. Now that you're setting meal time and you've got your cat's energetic mojo going, what's the next thing that you can do to sort of drain out that steam that's building up in them all day long because there's so much energetic input from the humans in this place? You've heard me say it once, you'll hear me say it a million times again. Play with your cat, play with your cat, play with your cat so important and now we can work it into our three r's the best time to play with your cat as far as i'm concerned is before they eat their meal think about how your sort of ancestral cat that cat the raw cat i talk about the one from ten thousand years ago how do they work well they hunt they catch they kill they eat we can do that with interactive play then we end it with food getting them into that rhythm is so 
great. You will see a difference in your cat. If you play with them at least one of those meals a day, you are going to see a change in their confidence, a change in the way they are. They aren't destructive, knocking things around, looking for fun however they can find it. No, you're presenting them the opportunity to drain out energy the way that nature wants them to do it. So play with your cat. I've got more videos. You'll see links around here to get to the, the, the basics of playing with your cat. Another thing that you can do with your cat while all of us are in this great staycation is clicker training. Now, if you haven't heard me talk about the Cat Positive program, it is an initiative of the Jackson Galaxy Project. We've been taking clicker training techniques into shelters all across the US. Well, now I'm gonna give you the tools you need to start clicker training your cat in your home. Uh, if you go to this link here, well, I'll put it down at the bottom also, that'll take you to uh, quick and easy instructions on how to get clicker training going and that's where you can start teaching your cat a high five teaching them to touch their nose to something teaching them to sit to teaching them to stay somewhere while you do something and then you reward them because they're not getting up in your grill while you're trying to get something done there's an endless array of things that you guys can do that involve clicker training I mean you can even take your cat through a cat agility course you can even set up little cones and things like that and shelves on the wall and turn it into a cat agility course. And clicker training is the way you get through it. It is fun. I am telling you, it's easy. And it will, again, change your cat and change your relationship with your cat. Who doesn't want that? Now, of course, just because you're home doesn't mean that you can pay attention to your cat 24-7. I know that, and that's why we have the, the, the sort of independent toys, the, the ones that, you know, little mice or little crinkles, and you throw them, they bat it around, it goes under the fridge, and now they're like, hey, what else you got for me? One of the things that you can do that's not just a crinkle mouse somewhere is a puzzle toy. Puzzle toys, we put their favorite food in it and it, they basically have to work that puzzle in order to get the food out. And you're not really gonna get them to, to engage with a puzzle toy unless you put the food version of a bar of gold inside that toy. If you are withholding food until mealtime, and that means treats too, you guys, then your cats will be extra motivated to work the food out of these puzzles. One tip here is you want what I call the jackpot treat. Now the jackpot pot treat means that one thing that your cat will be like, I, I need this. I need to have this, whatever's in your hand right now, whatever that smell is, I gotta have it right this second. Well, of course, over time, if you keep giving it to them, then it loses its luster, you know? So we're gonna withhold that treat, except when we're clicker training or except when it's in their puzzle toy. There's a great website that runs down everything about puzzle toys and some suggestions about where to get some of the best ones. And I'll put that up right here and you'll check it out in the links. Uh, but in the meantime, did you you know that you can make a puzzle toy out of an empty toilet paper roll? And we got plenty of those, I hope. Okay, so we've talked about interactive play. We've talked about independent play, crinkle toys or even puzzle toys. But there's a third leg of this enrichment plan and that is what I call cat TV. What is cat TV? Well, just look out your window. That's cat TV. I mean, right now I'm looking out the window and I see like a person of course, and a few cars and whatever. But for cats, looking out the window and seeing nature, that is a home run, people. So the best thing that I've found that you can do is put bird feeders outside your window if you're able to do that. That way you're attracting birds and your cats will just sit there all day. And there's equivalents. I mean, whether they're hummingbird feeders, regular bird feeders, um, squirrel baths, ways to attract squirrels. These things, your cats will look at it for hours and not move. Anything uh, that you can put in your windows where they can sit there, watch their cat TV, and also use it as their cat superhighway, ding, 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 that's a winner right there. And that does nothing but raise their confidence while we raise them off the ground. Now, my suggestion is you let them go at the cat TV for however many hours during the day as they want, but always end it up with a play session that then leads into a meal. We're into the three R's again, right? We let them watch TV for as much as they want, but just like 
kids being parked in front of a TV for hours. They are then going to have physical energy built up. Your cat is going to have that physical raw cat hunter energy built up. Well, then we're going to break out a feather toy and we're going to run around the house and we're going to drain that energy out and then we're going to feed a meal. See where I'm going with this 3R land, right? Hunt, catch, kill, eat, groom, sleep, rinse, repeat. And this is the kind of thing that you can do and you can do it now. No matter what, it's a great way to get your cat's energy on something that you aren't responsible for all day long and then you just take the job over after a while. Now the final thing that I want to talk about and this is a really big one it's the concept of environmental enrichment what I call catification making a home that works for your cats and it also works for you. I want you to think about one of the big things we have to deal with right now which is the crowded house everyone is home and think about what that must be like from a cat's eye view right they're down there and what are they doing they are competing for floor space and they are just constantly looking for a place where they can confidently park their butts and just observe take in their territory so my big big selling point here in catification is getting your cats up into the vertical world because cats own the sky guys everybody else owns the floor cats own the sky so how do we get them up there now might be the time for you to achieve that big grand catification project that you might have thought about uh, that we may have outlined kate benjamin and i in our two books about catification check those guys out but in the meantime, you can just do it by simply moving around furniture a lot of the times. Let's start with this concept that I call the cat superhighway. The cat superhighway really revolves around my assertion about cats thriving in the vertical world. The idea is, can your cat, can they walk into the living room, jump up on something, and then circle the room without touching the floor and then leave the room? If not, that is something to really strive for. So one of the things you can do is just take stock of what you've already got. For instance, your cat can walk into the living room. All right, they hop up on the recliner. After the recliner, we've got that little end table there where you put your drinks. Okay, well, after that, maybe we've got another chair and maybe we've got a TV console, or maybe we have to just move that a little closer just to make it work without some sort of gargantuan leap from your cat. Then maybe you've got your mantle and after the mantle, the bookcase and maybe another chair and the couch and boop, they're out. It may work that way. You may get away with just moving some furniture around. Now you may have to add a little something. I hope that you guys have a cat tree or two in your home, uh, that you have places where your cats can climb and perch anyway. If not, it is time to get a few of those. Regardless, I'm gonna make you spend money somewhere and that's really one of the most important ones. So you can use those to fill up the holes in there. But if someone in your house knows how to hang a shelf, hang a shelf, man. That is something that is just such a gimme where your cat can get up there and be like the Lion King. That's where Mojo comes from, ownership of territory. They perceive territory in an up and down 360 degree way that we don't even see. And they can get up on a shelf, up on the bookcase, up on the top of the couch even, and look around just like the Lion King surveying the savannah and be like, yeah. I own this, man. This joint is mine. The last little bit of catification I'm gonna talk about is scent soakers. What I mean by scent soakers are, you know, things like uh, those little furry beds. Anything where they can sit on it and their scent gets into it, that again, we're getting back to ownership of territory and cat mojo. It smells like them and nobody else. And that is something that marks territory with them having to actually mark the territory. So that's important. Catification is another key to your cat's well-being in a time of stay at home. All right, that wraps it up. That is pretty much my list of things that you can do to help raise cat confidence and increase family harmony in times of the forced staycation, which is where we're at right now. This is your opportunity to get to know your family members better. You get to see their likes and dislikes, when they're happy and when they're a little bit stressed out. Their body language will start making a lot more sense to you. And when you are able to see those little signs of stress, you can forestall a lot of unhappiness down the road. And alternately, when you see them really enjoying something, you can give them more of it. This is not just a time Time to enrich environments. This is a time to enrich our bond. And that's what playtime does. That's what the three R's do. That's what catification does. That's what clicker training does. And by the way, 
that's what just carving out some time to lean back on the couch and have a little snuggle session. That's all of these things add up to cat mojo, cat confidence, and a much stronger relationship and bond between you and them. So really, when you think about it, there's a lot of good to be had here. And hey, we've spent this entire video talking about making a more comfortable, more confident home for your cat during the staycation and a more confident and loving relationship between you guys. Well, now that we've done that, it's a perfect time to add one more even temporarily, please still consider fostering. The American shelter system needs us more than ever. We're facing an unprecedented crisis. So please step up, raise your hand, say, you know what, I can do one more for now. And uh, we have all of the resources that you might ask for to get you through that as well. But you'll be saving lives. And that's important right about now to take care of ourselves and our cats, but also the cats and the shelters in our communities. It's the least we can do. All right, that's it for today but more to come. Stay tuned here. I'm going to be answering questions as we go and as topics pop up, you'll see this face. I promise you. All right, you guys, that's it. So until the next time we see each other, which will be soon, stay safe, please, and take care of each other and take every opportunity to show love because that's what's going to get us all through to the other side. Light and love and mojo to you. Bye, guys. Meow.